I just see her name here. I guess we could move on and come back to both uh, Judy and Jeff. Um, that would mean I'd have to move on to uh, Tim Wittig. And right now he's muted. Am I still I muted? muted? I think you're not muted anymore, Tim. Oh, good. <laughs> There's a, uh, oh. Wait, is Judy, is Judy back? Yes, I am. Uh, oh. My internet went down literally when you called my name. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the timing is always perfect like that. Uh, okay, right. Tim will wait. Tim would be Judy, happy to turn away till you're done. So, uh, Judy, um, yeah. fire when ready. Okay, thank hi, you. Hi, Judy. Hi, Dr. Hanani, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you, more than welcome to see you today. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here, thank you. Go ahead and start, thanks. Okay, so I'm going to uh, share my screen so I can go through my slides. Um, and I'm just going to bring those up real quick. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So just one moment, I'm sharing my screen as we speak. Can everyone go. see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So um, the focus here uh, this morning was, let's see, it's uh, presenting automatically. So I'm part of Angel Gen, and what we focus on is helping um, uh, region stakeholders all over the world uh, put together angel conferences. But I also run an incubator program in California uh, for tech and innovation startups. And so the presentation today is a combination of um, all the best practices that we've put in place um, as the economic development director from my region uh, to help support economic development. Um, and also I'll touch a little bit on what angel conferences are because that is one of the best practices that we've um, implemented in, to, to support our local economic development. Um, so here's an outline of the best practices. Uh, number one, certainly uh, for our startups, is being able to provide access to capital, uh, making sure that the startups get all the adequate coaching, mentoring, uh, as the prior speakers have outlined, that is such a key factor. Uh, hosting space, uh, you know, that's where you create your entrepreneurship hub. That's where serendipity happens. Co-founders can um, meet each other to, to share uh, ideas, share resources, uh, and maybe even team up. Um, training, of course, a lot of intensive training. Uh, our jobs are, is to help accelerate the process um, and to help people achieve their goals in a faster, more diligent way. Uh, a lot of business planning, for sure. Uh, we found that another area of, of a best practice is ties with higher education. Um, so as our first speaker mentioned, very important to be connected with local universities. And of course, a lot of networking. So all these elements um, are, you know, come out of the incubator program as, as people who manage and run these programs, uh, we have to ensure that we can implement all these best practices. But as a result of that, we're building that ecosystem for our entire region uh, from, you know, where we're located. Um, so access to capital, of course, there's the traditional access, which is in, you know, equity funding with investors, with angel groups and venture firms. Uh, there's bank lending, there's grant funding, there's factoring, crowdfunding, lots of different pathways. None of them are exclusive, naturally. We support every single one. So we try to build very good relationships with angel groups throughout California and out of state. Um, I work diligently with all our local banks to make sure that the banks are able to jump in and assist and support our companies, even if they're pretty early stage. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about the Angel Conference, because this is what I consult on uh, as, a, as a separate effort. Um, I'm launching our fourth Angel Conference here in uh, Central California. And this is where we encourage, we realize that we're not in Silicon Valley, we're exactly midway between LA and San Francisco, um, but there are a lot of high net worth individuals in our area. So the idea was they've never invested in, in tech startups. They don't know much about investing in startups, 
how do we encourage them to become part of the entrepreneurship ecosystem and to get involved? Um, so I, I reach out to individuals, encourage them to put a, a very minimal amount of money into a fund. We create a new fund every year. Um, we pull together, you know, 150 to 200 thousand dollars, so very minimal amount. But we meet every month with these investors to train them in startup investing. Um, and at the end of the six month period, they review startups who apply to be part of the program and they pick their top six startups. We have a big, big event, big showcase event. And again, that's part of that entrepreneurship ecosystem. We invite all of the business community to attend to see the top six pitch, the startups pitch their, um, uh, their business. And then the investor group votes to make their investment into one startup. And then that's it, the fund closes. So the idea here is we've trained these investors and they're gonna go on to make future investments. And what we've seen over the last four years is that they do do significant follow-on investments. Um, and uh, it's generated a lot of activity um, and they, they mentor these startups, they advise them. So it gets them engaged with our programming. Uh, and here's some of the, idea and overview of the contents that we provide to the investors as we do these angel conferences. So we teach them how to review the startups, look at financials, um, study the cap tables, term sheets, how, how to negotiate the deal terms for the investment. Uh, and we help them do all the due diligence. Um, so that's just a quick overview, but a lot of fun training for, for about six months. So capital, access to capital is key to make sure that you have a thriving ecosystem. Uh, the second piece that uh, I focus on very heavily is coaching and mentoring. Uh, all the startups in our incubator program within the first three months, um, they are mandated <laughs> to put together an advisory board. It's a very informal advisory board, but the idea is um, you bring in three to five complete experts in their areas. So maybe you have a brilliant finance guy, uh, you know, a very strong marketing person and someone who just deeply knows the industry that you're in. You meet with them once a month and it, it elevates the conversation that that little think tank that you put in place is going to help you troubleshoot big issues. Um, of course, we do, um, they all are assigned a lead mentor. We do deep dives on a monthly basis with the lead mentor. We offer a lot of open office hours, a lot of experts who come and host office hours and they're available to answer whatever question pops up. And we also, uh, so I also run our regional business development center. Uh, and through that center, we have access to another 34 paid consultants that can meet one-on-one -on -one with our startups. Um, we pay the consultants, not the startups, and, but the startups have free access. Um, so that, that works really well. But a lot of coaching and mentoring, it has to be regular. You have to set um, you know, KPIs, goals, and make sure month to month that they're achieving their, their goals. Um, hosting, hosting, like I said, is a big deal. Um, that's where a lot of exchange of ideas happens. Uh, that's where people can team up and help each other. Um, so we have 20,000 square feet. Our incubator space uh, is located in our downtown. Um, and we're moving forward to launching verticals in four areas. Um, so far, we've been agnostic. We've been uh, open to any startup in any industry. Uh, we're eight years in. So it's, it's been a process, eight years. Uh, but we're now seeing um, demand for specific verticals that we want to tap into. We're located next to uh, Vandenberg um, uh, it's a milit military base just a few hours south. Uh, it's the only other base where the, we do space launches here in California. Um, that and, and Cape Canaveral on the, you know, Florida. So we've got the East West Coast. So we're the West Coast version of uh, what's going on in Florida. And we're trying to figure out how we can really tap into that. So SpaceX is using uh, that zone to do space launches. Uh, we, want, we want to really explore how we can um, uh, maximize that vertical for, from a tech and innovation perspective. That's just one example I wanted to highlight. And hosting can also mean uh, foreign exchange programs. I think that's really, really important. Um, I've negotiated um, 
MOUs with different incubators throughout the throughout Europe mostly. Um, but again, it's to give the opportunity for our startups as needed that you know they, they have an option out there to, to go explore for three months if there's a market they want to tap into. Um, training, so I mentioned our business development center. Most of the training is done through that center. We do at least 72 to 100 events each year. Um, you know, that's, that's a lot. Uh, a lot of, we, we invite a lot of very successful entrepreneurs to come in and tell their story once a month. And that's just more motivational to get people driven. Um, we do some very intensive um, pitch prep practice with our startups so that they get ready to talk to investors and that they're, um, you know, that they're very professional and completely ready to present when it's time to start sharing the slide decks to investors. So that's the other thing. It's, it's all about building very strong relationships. I mentioned earlier, um, you know, I work really hard to have good relationships with angel groups, venture firms. Uh, and I, you know, we really try to make sure that we only present um, uh, good deals. And if I don't have a good deal, that's okay. Uh, I'd rather not present anything than uh, present something that's not top notch. Um, we encourage our, oops, sorry, our founders to, we meet once a month where all the founders get together and, and again, share uh, where they're at, issues they're having. They help each other out a lot. That's our peer-to-peer -peer roundtables. Uh, I talked about coaching sessions and all these different types of workshops. This is just a, a you know, a small outline of examples of the workshops that we offer. Uh, digital marketing, QuickBooks, branding, uh, IP, uh, you know, and then of course the more traditional stuff that we do as well. Um, <clears throat> business planning, we use software, uh, it's on the cloud. So that allows all of our consultants to log on and see where every startup's at in their business planning. Of course, we do use the business model canvas early on and that's great early on, but at some point in time, I, I do believe that, you know, a more traditional business plan is helpful and useful. Uh, um, as you grow your business. Uh, I mentioned the monthly advisory board sessions. We ask our startups to plan very diligently as if they were presenting to their board of directors um, to take it very seriously. And that preps them for when they do get investment from investors on how to best present their, um, uh, the business on a monthly basis. And I talked about KPIs, setting goals, setting uh, metrics that they can measure their success against. Um, ties with higher education. Uh, so we're hosted by Cal Poly University. Um, lots of resources on campus. Um, that's, you know, that's definitely key. And networking, 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 networking. So that's how you create opportunity. Uh, we do forums, coffee and conversation, VIP events. Um, and that's how you create that entrepreneurship hub. Um, oops, and oh yes, and this is my partner, Misty Rusk, my business partner. Um, and so the, the services that we offer separately from all of this is just the focus on angel conferences. Uh, so if any, anyone wants to know more about that piece, um, feel free to contact us. And um, happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Excellent, Judy. I think that was uh, very well presented. Um, we're running a little short of time. If there are questions, we'll certainly take them. Um, just a, a couple points I wanted to make. I noticed in your list of uh, uh, seven uh, functions essentially you provide, the first one and the last one, I thought, while they're all very important, the first one and the last one, access to capital and networking, I think are really the two keys. All those other things, again, are very important too. But if they have the capital and access to um, a, a network that can help them succeed, I think that's um, very, very important. You also said something else. Um, you work to sometimes train angel investors. And I found that to be very interesting too, because I know there are uh, people who would like to be angel investors. Usually these are a little older people and they've been successful and they've accumulated their own capital. Exactly. They, just, they just don't know how to do this. Uh, so you're showing them that I think is a, a very valuable uh, point. I know a lot of other countries, the government's a little more involved in the financing of the new ventures. In the U.S., it's mostly private. There's some government funding, but it's mostly uh, private. So I think you're serving a very valuable function, training investor uh, uh, investors how to be angels. So thank you very much for uh, your uh, excellent presentation. I certainly wish you uh, luck in the, in the future. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we're ready to move on uh, with Tim. Uh, Tim Wittig, are you here, Tim? 
Uh, let me 